Hey everybody, it's Jessica DeMassa with WTF Health. What's the future of health? I am talking to the who's who of health tech and healthcare innovation. And today we are joined by Chris Mahalik. He is the CEO of Wellbeing Navigation and Health Company, Virgin Pulse. So he's gonna get us up to speed on all things happening there in his business, including that WellTalk acquisition that just closed, I believe. So Chris, it's great to have you with us. It's great to be here. Thank you for having me and looking forward to our conversation. I am as well. So it's a surprising stat from you guys. You guys work, I, I know you work with employers, health plans, and health systems, but on that employer front, 25% of the Fortune 500. And so where I want to kind of kick the conversation off, it's like, first of all, I'd like to get an update on Virgin Pulse. And then I quickly want to move into like some trend spotting on employers and what their concerns are for their well, their employees' well-being, especially because things have changed so much in COVID. But before we get there, like, like I said, get us up to speed on Virgin Pulse. You guys have been around for a very long time. You guys are incredibly successful. Like I said, I mean, I mean, 25% of the Fortune 500, that's pretty impressive. Health plans, health systems. But you know, tell me high level about the business. What is it that you guys do? Yeah, we're the leader in digital health and well-being. We enable people to manage their health care, whether they're already, uh, already healthy, uh, whether they're experiencing a pre-chronic condition, or whether they need help navigating through the complexity of an acute situation. So we, we expect to be there for somebody wherever they are on the healthcare journey. And we're doing that through a digital platform that we make available both through employers and through health plans uh, in particular to help their members more effectively effectively manage healthcare. The thing I love about this is I feel like it hits on like so many key areas of interest right now in terms of health and wellness and well-being. You know, I mean, not only on the employer side and helping them kind of, you know, meet the needs of their employee populations, but also on like the health plan side. I'm curious about like, you know, your role as kind of an aggregator of point solutions as well. I'd like to hear a little bit about that because we've, we've all read that Wall Street Journal article that talks about how fatigued everybody is on those digital health point solutions. So talk about the role that Virgin Pulse plays there in terms terms of bringing all of that together and making that available to your clients. Yeah, we actually want to be the home base for health for our clients. So we talk about home base for health as our strategy from a product perspective. It means a single digital front door. It means helping people, uh, again, wherever they are in the healthcare journey, whether they're healthy, uh, whether they're facing an acute issue, whether they're dealing with a pre-chronic condition, we want to be there all along the way. And we want them to be able to navigate to other solutions that are necessary for them if they have a particular condition that needs treatment. So while there's been this proliferation of point solutions uh, handling every possible therapy that somebody might need, we wanna be that one-stop aggregator that enables the, them to get to those solutions effectively so they can actually get the deep care they need when we're not the kind of pre-chronic care provider that we think we can be. Say a little bit more about your strategy there, because I'm curious about this, because I feel like care navigation, especially in the last two years, has been just something that's really, I, start, I feel like it's starting to bubble to the top in terms of the conversations that I'm having. And there's a lot of different takes on care navigation. So, I mean, some of them are primary care focused and actually integrated within a primary care type clinic or type primary care type offering. Others are, are, you know, like yourselves, where it's more of a platform that's kind of aggregating a bunch of different things together and really just serving a wayfinding type of role, but a smarter wayfinding role. I'd like, love to hear like specifically about your strategy in that care navigation or in that well-being navigation kind of role. Like, how do you guys sure. tackle that? Yeah, well, first and foremost, it starts with having a great relationship with the member or the patient. Uh, and we think that's what we do with 45% engagement on our platform, people being engaged and involved in our platform on a regular and almost daily basis for a number of our, our, our participants. It means we develop a relationship with them. It puts us in a great position when they need care to help them to the right care provider. That might be a virtual care provider. That might be a coach that comes from our network. That might be a specific digital therapeutic solution. So we think we're really well positioned to help that individual navigate to the right solution. For some of our partners, uh, they would say we're driving five to seven times more um, engagement on their platforms because we're able to direct people and guide them to the solutions that they most need. So we're kind of, I would describe us as agnostic. Uh, we want you to find the best care, the best provider, the best location, uh, the best solution, given where you come into that care journey. 
Uh, and then let me just say one last thing. We do provide coaches uh, and we think dealing with weight loss and smoking cessation and, and entry level issues around mental health and hypertension, we think we're really well positioned to provide that kind of early stage care for people before they end up in a chronic condition. But if we recognize they need something more, then we'll direct and navigate them in that direction. How important is this? And I want to, I know you work with plans and health systems, but I want to zoom in on employers if I can for a second. How important has this become to employers to have somebody who's there who's serving that role of not only navigating their employees, you know, to, to help figure out which is the right, you know, care or well-being solution for for whatever it is that they've they've got and catching it early on and providing that coaching. How important has that become? And like has that changed through the pandemic from what you've heard from them? Absolutely. I, I think it's become enormously important. Um, I, I kind of have, I've talked about the small W well-being and capital W well-being. Ooh, what's the difference? <laughs> the, the market has changed and I think well-being has become a C-suite issue uh, for many employers, for most employers, because if you're in the C-suite, what you care about is presenteeism, productivity, engagement. You want people to be at work and you want them to be engaged at work. And because of that, you know, the if you take COVID, if you take the great resignation, if you take social unrest, all of these issues have the potential to impact uh, an employer's ability to have people productive, present, and engaged. And so we think we're the right solution to help our employer clients uh, enable their staff to be, you know, focus on their mental well-being, focus on their physical well-being, and ensure that they can be present at work each day. And so that's what we're about. And, and, and we think we have a role to play in helping the C-suite uh, in enabling the workforce to be more focused uh, in their day-to-day -day, uh, day -day work. Zooming out a little bit, you know, do, can you share with us what you're seeing? I mean, some of the hallmarks of how employers are, are looking at benefits now. I mean, like you're in this space where, you know, it's like you guys play an important role in terms of these well-being benefits and this care navigation benefit and, and access to a variety of these digital point solutions, whatever might be the, the best way um, to provide early on, early on care to their employees. But how has their sentiment towards benefits, you know, capital B benefits to borrow your, your capitalization of things? How has that changed? I, and, and what are some of the hallmarks of where we're at now? Well, as you described earlier, point solutions have be, become complex. The healthcare challenges have not become easier. The costs associated with healthcare, healthcare have not gone away. And so if I'm an employer, I care deeply uh, about healthcare costs. I care deeply about the engagement of my people. Uh, and I care deeply that they're able to get the experience that they need in the healthcare environment. And I think that means companies like Virgin Pulse are gonna be in a great position to be the consolidator, the one-stop shop, the home base for health that enables people to actually take care of themselves and their families in a way that helps them be more productive at work. And I, I think that's the key, you know, from my perspective in terms of our return on investment to our clients. We want, we want to be there to help them with cost and complexity and make it simpler for both the employer and for the individual member who has to deal with the day-to-day -day challenges of healthcare. I mean, so like health benefits have always been a part of comp packages for employers. I mean, I'm looking at that 25% of the Fortune 500. Post-COVID now, in, in, the, in the environment of this great resignation that they've been experiencing, like how, what have you seen there? I mean, I feel like I know what I've heard and it seems like their interest in providing value added benefits is higher, but I, I'd love to check that with you. What are you experiencing? Yeah, I completely agree with that. Um, I think, um, I think it, again, it goes back to engagement and I think certain kinds of benefits are becoming kind of a needed to play expectation of, uh, of employees in a great resignation environment. Employees, I think, are making choices about where they're going to work and benefits will play a key role in that decision-making. I think compensation always kind of, you know, is the lead, but after that is, you know, am I gonna be cared for? Is my family gonna be cared for? And healthcare becomes a really central component uh, to the overall offering. So benefits matter. Uh, and if I have a, uh, a particular condition or if somebody in my family has a particular condition, I, I think it matters to that individual where they're going to you know, show up every day and where they're going to invest their discretionary effort. So I think benefit programs have become 
crucially important for employers to really focus on. Now, with all the complexity, they're looking for you know, a simple way to deploy those. Again, digital front door, I think from an employer perspective, it's sometimes simplicity in contracting. Yeah, you know, do I, I don't want to contract with all these different providers. I think it's simplicity in terms of IT uh, and security review. I, I don't want to have to send my security team out to evaluate the security posture of all those. What we're trying to do through our partner network is make it really simple. We've done the security review. We'll put it under our contract, making it easier for the employer to have access to the breadth of solutions they need without having to make huge investments in making that possible. Chris, are you seeing the same thing in your other client, the other side of your client base, the health plan and the health system client base? Like, give us a sense of what might be the same or the different or different there in terms of the way that they're looking at Virgin Pulse. Yeah, for, from that perspective, I think what the health plan in particular is looking for is to create a better relationship with the member. So health plans haven't always been great at creating a great relationship, uh, ongoing relationship uh, with the member. And I think they're looking to do that. Uh, I think they're also looking to do that through digital platforms. And so what we're trying to provide and try to be with the health plans is a way for them to build that relationship, for them to be with the, the member, the patient, all along their journey. Before they have a need, uh, it would be great if a major health plan or minor health plan had a relationship with somebody. And I think a well being platform is uniquely positioned to build a relationship with all members, not just those who have a particular need at that moment. So that when they do have a need, they, they already feel like they've built up a sense of trust with that health plan. And I think trust has been, you know, maybe at, at times, an underlying issue for health plans. Do they have trust with the members or are they seen as a gatekeeper? And I think using a platform like ours enables them to build a relationship, build up trust and put them in a better position to help that member through every aspect of their health. All right, I would like to hear, I feel like this is the perfect segue into the Wall Talk acquisition. Like, I'd love to hear more about that. I mean, so, I mean, from what I read about it, it seemed like they were bringing a lot of different technology to Virgin Pulse in the sense of like two things, communication and engagement with member. And then I felt like also like on the data analytics side in terms of like having some, some pretty, you know, slick ways of identifying who needs what and getting them to where they need to go even, even faster than you, you were able to before. But you tell me what was so attractive about Wall Talk as a business? Why bring them into the fold. Yeah, 20% of that business was sort of what I'll call like Virgin Pulse. It was very much well-being oriented. They had great platform clients and we brought those uh, those clients onto the, or we're bringing them onto the Virgin Pulse platform. But the other 80% was really tied to data analytics and a data set that they've curated and developed over a long period of time. So they have information and insight around 250 million healthcare consumers. And we're using that database to do a few things. The primary thing we're trying to do is activate people. We talk about Virgin Pulses being the engagement company. And we talked about WellTalk being the activation company, the company that can target very specifically the people who are most likely to respond to certain kinds of campaigns about their health. Those campaigns might be closing a gap in care. They, it might be a campaign around medication adherence for a Medicare population. Um, or um, it might be in helping somebody in a, who, who needs a knee surgery find the right hospital to go get that, that surgery done. And so we're leveraging our database of 250 million consumers now to go target the right people. We have insights about them from the data that we've gathered both publicly and through our own resources. Uh, and we know how to target them. We know how to, uh, how to reach them through nine different modalities, through email, uh, through text, through, uh, through uh, the web. So we have a, a number of ways that we can get to somebody to get them to do the thing that we think is most important for them or their family's health. That's incredible. I mean, I didn't realize they came with such a large treasure trove of data here. I, and I think it's interesting the way that you're you're looking to deploy that. I mean, as you look ahead, I mean, talk to me about what's what's coming down the pike. I mean, like I said at the, at the top, Virgin Pulse has been around for a very long time. I mean, you guys have a, a stellar reputation in terms of employee engagement. I mean, employee plan and the whole, the whole spread there, engagement with, with patients and with clients. Um, so, I mean, talk to me about like what's next for you guys. I mean, any any other acquisitions, any other parts of the business you're looking to shore up? I mean, how, what do you what do you have on your three year plan here? 
I think the biggest thing in the near term is going to be our launch of a full navigation capability with transparency, uh, with, uh, with steerage, helping people to actually select the highest quality, lowest cost doctors to, to do, to go seek care at the right facility, uh, et cetera. So I think that's going to be, you know, for us over the next six months, continuing to launch uh, that capability and deepen that capability to attach that to our well-being clients so that somebody who is healthy, who then finds himself in an acute situation, has all the resources they need to navigate to the right solution. That's a big part of our investment over, over the next six months. Uh, and we see that capability as uh, kind of the, the next big stage for us. As we think towards the future, um, I, I think digital care navigation is, uh, is really important. I think digital therapeutics are really important uh, and um, sort of identifying the role that Virgin Pulse will play in that primary care, virtual care, care management space uh, will be a, a, an important part of our strategy over the next few years. Is there anything you can tell us about your thinking on digital therapeutics? I'd love to hear that. I'm also going to ask about primary care, but I'd like to hear about the digital therapeutic side of things first, because that, that can mean different things to different people. So, I mean, in the, in the world of Virgin Pulse, what does that mean? And can you share anything about what areas of, of therapeutics you're interested in? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, obviously, mental health is a huge and hot topic. And so, we already have a, a network of 200 coaches who are coaching people on various conditions. Uh, they were already doing some coaching around mental health, but we've kind of, you know, we've blown that out a little further. We're being much more clear about our value proposition. We don't, we're not a psychiatric care. We're not going that deep, but we believe we can be kind of a, an early stage uh, mental health uh, capability to help coach people through uh, through conditions they may have around anxiety or early stage uh, elements like that. Uh, we also have, a, you know, we have a diabetes prevention capability. So we're not a full diabetes care management provider, but we can help with diabetes prevention uh, and the methodologies and, and approach to helping people deal with that kind of condition. So we've had we've got a couple of pieces that we have in place, and then again. Our partnership model is the key model so that we can flex up or down the chain based on what somebody truly needs to really deal with their healthcare issue. All right. On that primary care side, do you guys dip into the care delivery or just more effective navigation thanks to all the tech you've got behind the scenes? Yeah, we are not in, we're not billing as a medical claim today. We're not providing direct care today. Um, and I think we're, we're you know, again, from a strategy perspective, in the next couple of years, we'll, we'll navigate that, that environment. Uh, it could happen through partners. Uh, yeah. And I think, again, like a health plan wants to have a journey uh, that, they, that, that people can go through, I think health systems and, and networks and even virtual uh, providers would benefit from having a relationship with somebody before they actually have a need. And so I think there are some partnerships out there that may be, uh, may be possible between us and, uh, and some people who are in the virtual and on-premise primary care environment to help you know, essentially be a lead stream for bringing people in, into their environment. Chris, that's a hot space to get into. I'm pretty excited to hear that Virgin Pulse is stepping in that direction. I mean, like I said at the beginning, I feel like the things that are really hot right now is this care navigation space and what that means and how that's being kind of redefined in this new world of virtual and digital. Very exciting stuff. We'll have to keep our eye on you and you'll have to come back when some of these big partnerships get announced. Promise? Yep, I would love to do that. So uh, it was great spending a little time with you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. I mean, it's been exciting to hear like I, I like it, for those who have followed along Virgin Pulse's, you know, history and evolution. I think it's been it's been, I think, inspiring to see how you guys have, have kind of grown along with the digital and virtual side of the industry and, and particularly along with what employers and plans and systems have needed all along the way in terms of engagement. So I think that's it's cool to check in with with a big company every once in a while and hear how things are going. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's a great story, Jessica. Through a handful of acquisitions, we went from being a, a small startup or a series of small startups into a fairly significant uh, player and the leader in the well being space because of the way we brought those capabilities together put them on a single digital SaaS platform uh, and enable our clients to get to a broader capability set, if you will. And so uh, it's been a great story over the last few years. And uh, I think the next few years are going to be as exciting as the past few. Good. Well, we will keep our eye on Virgin Pulse. Always have, always will. Too exciting not to. And Chris, thanks again for stopping by and kind of getting us up to speed on everything. It's, it, it's interesting to hear about how Well Talk is fitting into all this and then what you guys have planned next. That really got me excited. So thank you so much for sharing all of that.
Thanks for having me. All right. That's Chris Mahalik. He's the CEO of Virgin Pulse. Thank you again for joining me here. I'm Jessica DeMassa. And for more interviews with the who's who of health tech as they are changing the way that we do healthcare, check out my YouTube channel over there at youtube.com slash WTF Health. We'll talk to you guys soon. Take care. Chris, thanks again. Thank you.